So in this section of our video accompaniment to the temporal online learning module, uh, we're going to kind of answer or begin to answer the question, well, what do I do now? You know, you've gone to the trouble of creating a temporal attribute, so what? Well, we're going to start being able to analyze data in a more easy way than we would have done if it had been uh, entity data. So just to recall where we were, um, we have a few personal circumstances, and now we are able to use three different functions to place that data into temporal visualization. Fine. What we're going to do now is we're going to leverage that temporal uh, data and start writing functions, start writing rules that leverage it. I'm going to do this one in two parts. The first part is I'm going to create a Boolean because I am sure we've mentioned in other modules and I'm sure you've learned is that quite often having intermediary Booleans are very is very useful when you want to debug or also there are certain functions that require you to have Booleans instead of text-based attributes or whatever. So let's put in the data indicates military service if, and I'll put that into conclusion, I'll put this into level one and we'll use the rule assistant. The key with these uh, new functions is to remember not to go back to the entity data. The whole point of the previous exercise was to create temporal attributes and now we're going to be able to use them. So the data indicates military service if, and we'll use the temporal from range, which is the third one, equals, and I seem to recall one of the values, military, one of the values was military service. So I've set up, first of all, a Boolean attribute, which as you can probably tell is going to be yes, no, yes, no, depending on whether you're doing military service. So if we go to the debugger and take a look, we will indeed see that we have created a new attribute called the data indicates military service. And we can see that it has three change points. So our new Boolean attribute is uh, following along our chronology. Military service, not military service, military service again. So let's take that one step further and say that our goal is to verify your status as of a reference date. So we could say something like uh, first military service after 2001 equals, and we'll do this again with our rule assistant, when next, and we'll say the date is 2001-0101, and the condition is the data indicates military service. So you can see now that we're leveraging uh, our Boolean, which itself was leveraging our temporal uh, attribute to find out when you did your first military service after 2001. And if we return to our debugger, we'll see that the response is 14 January 2021, which when we look at our temporal visualization, there was military service here, but it was before 2001. And the next military service is indeed on the 14th of January 2021. In the same way, we could do something like this, where we'll be using something similar, the last non-military service equals we'll go to the rule assistant and we'll use when last. Remember that when last starts at the latest date, it starts at the date given and goes backwards up in time. So I'll say starting today and that'll mean heading backwards in time and we'll say does not indicate military service. So I'm using the negative of my boolean. And we'll go along and refresh our debugger. And we'll see that according to temporal visualization, you had your last military service began on 2021-0114, which means the last date when you weren't in military service, starting today, heading that way, is going to be the 13th. So the, the last known day before you return to military service. 
So when last, last and when next are great for pulling data out of chronologies, and both of them are able to leverage this concept of a neat uh, temporal Boolean, um, allowing us to quickly identify scenarios that are interesting to us.